When you hear the term proof, you probably imagine pages and pages of complex mathematical formulae. <laughs> but proofs can be viewed in a much broader sense. For example, when you log into your Brown email account, you're essentially giving a proof to the Google servers that you are the rightful owner of the account that you're trying to log into. Cryptography is a branch of computer science that has revolutionized the way we think about proofs. Proofs are no longer static objects on paper, but can be viewed more generally as an interaction between a prover and a verifier. Prover claims that a certain statement is true and must convince the verifier of her assertion through an interaction. For example, Let's say I want to prove to you that I solved this really hard Sudoku puzzle. Of course, I can give you the solution, but that's no fun. Now you can go and claim that you solved the Sudoku when you didn't. To address this conundrum, cryptographers have developed the amazing notion called zero knowledge proofs. Using such a proof, I can convince you that indeed I solved this puzzle, but without revealing the solution to you. The proof is designed so that if I haven't actually solved it, you will catch me. But more importantly, if I have solved it, then you learn nothing beyond the fact that I've solved it. So you gain no knowledge or zero knowledge through the interaction. Amazing, right? I have been fascinated by zero-knowledge proofs since the day I first heard about them. So in my PhD, I decided to challenge the notion of a proof even further. Challenge one, can I prove to you that my friends here are a brilliant bunch and that most of them have solved this hard Sudoku puzzle? Now, my friends are going to be super secretive about their solution. So the best I can hope for is a zero-knowledge proof from them. Can I do something with this? Indeed, yes. In my research, I have designed ways in which you can combine different proofs to create a new proof of a bigger, more complex statement so that it is still zero-knowledge. Then, I decided to challenge the notion of a proof even further. Challenge two, can I prove to you that I don't know something? Seems paradoxical, right? I can always pretend to not know. Then comes along the next big idea. What if the proof of not knowing something is the knowledge of something else? Let me give you some intuition. Consider a suspect in a criminal investigation. She wants to prove that she does not know anything about the crime. Now, she can do so by providing an alibi. So the alibi's knowledge is a proof that the suspect does not know anything about the crime. One of my most exciting projects has been to mathematically define this notion of proofs of ignorance and identify the settings in which they can be used. You may wonder why you should care about proofs. In general, proofs act as a mechanism of establishing trust among different entities. Today, as a society, we are at the brink of decentralization in the form of blockchain and cryptocurrencies. A blockchain is a platform for different entities to transact with each other without a trusted party. For example, Bitcoin is a truly decentralized currency. No government or bank owns it, and the trust is distributed across the network. In this global project of rethinking trust, cryptographic proofs are already playing a key role, and I believe my research will be one of the many pieces that will help consolidate the puzzle of decentralized trust. Thank you.